affect your health care in many different ways. So we are hopeful that it will be part of the preventive health care package. Uh, there's no guarantees on this. We don't know exactly how this is going to break down. And unfortunately, uh, dental care traditionally has not always been included as a required part of your basic health care. It's usually an add-on or you don't have it. And it does present serious challenges. If you, if you need, for example, a root canal, you know what it can cost. And if you don't get that root canal, it can cause very serious problems. So we are hopeful that we will be able to include some form of expansion of oral health care. Our next question is from Kenise of Hyattsville. Since the health care industry has spent $35 million in the first quarter of 2009 lobbying for private health care, what is the likelihood that any real health care reform will take place? Well, look, there's a lot of special interest in health care. Okay? There's a lot of special interest. And I, that's not a criticism. I think there is value added by the players in health care. We certainly want the prescription drug community to continue to develop the new medicines that can allow us to eat all that high cholesterol food and still keep our cholesterol down. You know, we, we, we like that type of lifestyle, so we hope they'll develop a new pill that we'll be able to take, and maybe we won't have to exercise quite as much as they're telling us. So we don't want to discourage the development of prescription drugs and new medicines. Uh, the insurance industry helps develop programs that can keep down costs. I'll just give you one example. There's now plans being developed that if you take responsibility for your own uh, lifestyle, if you deal with smoking, if you deal with diabetes, if you deal with your coronary care, if you deal with obesity, and it's individual. By the way, it's your own suit. They, they look at you and develop a game plan for you. You can dramatically reduce health care costs. Now, there are now plans out there that are trying to reward that type of personal behavior. So there's value added. And then there's special interest among the health care providers. The hospital community is a special interest. Doctors are a special interest. Nurses are a special interest. And the list goes on and on and on. And then there's special interest, those who are concerned about whether we're doing enough to take care of certain types of needs. People out there are trying to get more care for our children. People out there saying we've got to do more for breast cancer. People out there saying we've got to do more for diabetes. And then we have disparities in America advocating for women's health care because historically there's been discrimination against women's health care in America. Or we know there's racial disparity in diseases. And there are those who are seeking to, to try to equalize and to provide greater attention on some of the racial disparities. They're all special interests. They're all special interests. And in our democratic system, they have a right to be heard. Now, I just that's the good news. Now, let me just tell you where the dark side or the bad side of this could be. We saw in 1993 some very irresponsible ads that were put out by the, at that time it was the insurance community. And they really poisoned the well for Senator, for President Clinton's ability to, to bring forward health care reform in 1993. I hope that we will see a much more sophisticated approach. There are legitimate concerns that interest groups have, and they're entitled to be heard. But I hope that we won't lose sight of the fact that we have a serious crisis in health care in America. You just can't afford this current system. And we can do so much better. Dr. Shell pointed out so many things that could be improved with the current system. So I hope it will be a debate that will be challenging and that the interest groups will be honest with the American people as to their interest, rather than using the labels or scare tactics that it's government takeover or social, uh, socializing medicine or things like that, which is, I think, terribly irresponsible. Let's, let's get to the real issues, and I hope at the end of the day we can all come together and improve our health care system, and I hope the, the various interest groups will participate. Now, we're going to open up uh, questions to the public. We do have two microphones on either side, and they are staffed by uh, members of the senator's staff. So we would ask that you line up and do five at a time. And uh, what we're also going to ask is that you ask a question. 
So we are here for the senator to answer questions. Uh, you will give us your name and just the town or city that you're from, and then you will ask your question. And uh, the staff, we want to make sure that we can have as many persons ask questions tonight as possible, so uh, they may prod you along. And then understand, too, that the senator will take into account everything that's been said, as well as all of the questions on the blue card. And uh, if we will start with the gentleman here. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ron Schlesinger from Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, my question is this. Do you feel that if the plan put out by Congress if eventually, once it's resolved between the House and Senate and is sent to President Obama, let's say it is really radically different from what he wants, do you think he should veto it? Or do, or do you think the, the need is such for health care reform that he will accept it? Well, I don't think that's going to happen. President Obama is very much engaged in the Congress. Uh, I think it's highly unlikely we would send to him a bill that he would object to the point that he would veto. Uh, President Obama has a different style than previous presidents. Uh, he has brought forward a vision on health care reform. He has set the parameters. And then he's said, let the legislative process work. Let's have the debate robust debate. Remember, President Clinton brought forward a detailed proposal. President Obama has not done that. I think it is unlikely that we would reach that type of a, a stalemate between the Congress and the, the President. My concern is whether we can get a meaningful bill through the legislative process. I think that's a greater risk than a difference between what Congress does and what the President thinks is needed. Senador Carden, eh, vengo de casa de Maryland, soy residente de Maryland. Así como yo, hay muchos residentes en Maryland, emigrantes, que estamos haciéndole esta pregunta a usted, porque nosotros como emigrantes necesitamos saber, nosotros sabemos de que el proyecto que se ha dado a, a lo que es el, el la reforma de salud no va a alcanzar equitativamente a todos mi pregunta es vengo hoy este día para preguntar si estoy aquí para preguntarle si usted apoya que se, que se dé seguro de salud a familias mixtas. Esto quiere decir familias mixtas, personas nacidas aquí y personas que vienen de otros países. Senator Cardin, my name is Gilberto and I come with Casa de Maryland. I'm a resident of Maryland. And like many immigrants who have the same question um, that live in the state of Maryland, we're very worried that the health care reform won't be equal and won't achieve the same thing for everyone, especially for immigrants. Uh, I come here to, to, today to ask you if you support giving health care to mixed families, which means families that some members of them are from this country and others are not from this country. Right. Well, th thank you for the question. Uh, and, and I'm going to try to restrict this to health care. I'm going to uh, listen to Dr. Duke's uh, uh, concerns. Immigration reform is something that we need to take up as a nation. And we, perhaps another town hall meeting will we'll take that up. On, on the health care, we, we strongly believe that, uh, that there should be full participation. If you're employed, you should be able to join your employer's groups. Uh, there should be full participation. Now, if you fall through the cracks, if, if, if you're undocumented, uh, we will have a certain number of uninsured. There's certain health care that's available, as you know. Uh, urgent care has always been available to every person in this country, regardless of status. But it, it's an issue that I think cries out for broader immigration reform. 
that we don't have people falling through the cracks in America.